So anyway, I uh, start picking it up and playing around with it a bit. And the pictures were turning out quite good, even like from the beginning. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I found something. <laughs> and uh, so my profession now is a continuation of, of that. Benjamin, let me say I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Oh, no problem. I have a lot of time at it's the good. moment. That's good. That's beautiful. I'm glad yeah. that you decided to give me some of it. Tell me this. Where were you born, Benjamin? Uh, I was born in Toisan, China, a rather smallish place. Um, I don't have much memories of it. Um, we left when I was four mm -hmm. for Canada, and um, but we had albums of... Um, I don't know, pictures of, uh, of us when we were like two, three, four, before leaving China. Okay. How many of you are there? How many children? Uh, many there's families? four of us. Four of you. And where are you placed in that? Are you the first? The I, I'm the oldest. The oldest. And then you have what? Brothers or sisters? I have uh, one brother, three sisters. So there's five of you. Oh yeah, five. <laughs> five of you. So, wait, so you're, the, you're the oldest. Are you still close with your siblings? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we keep in contact a bit. They're in Canada. Okay. Um, but I, I look back upon it a bit, and um, well, we left in 1952 when I was four. Mm -hmm. When I look back on some albums that we had, we had photo albums. Okay. And um, I thought uh, that was quite unusual considering the, you know, probably not many people had cameras at that time, and then we were lucky to get out of there before the Cultural Revolution. So, but you don't have any real memories of China at all because you were just four years no. old. No, the only memories I have of, of it is uh, what I see in the pictures. Okay. And quite surprisingly, we, we had qu quite a few albums. And um, so I, I was thinking back on my childhood and, um, and the fact that, you know, there was the Cultural Revolution uh, it was at 66 to 76, and I thought, God, how lucky we were, were we to, to mother, miss that. Your mother and father stayed together the whole time? Yeah. Are they, how are they doing now, your mother and father? Both? Yeah, they're in heaven. <laughs> how old were you when your mother and father passed? My mother in the mid-70s, and my father 10 years later. Okay. Yeah. And they stayed together the whole time? Hmm? They stayed together the whole time? Yeah. What did yeah. your parents do? What kind of work did they do? Um, my father had a uh, restaurant business and he also, um, he played the stock market, which I didn't know that much about, but he would be reading the newspaper all the time. And I, I guess that's where you get the inf information of concerning the, uh, how to say, how the world is moving, because that affects the, uh, the stock market. And uh, I was always like, oh, why is he reading the paper all the time, you know? And uh, so uh, I, I didn't re realize till later he had, like, yeah, some investments in, um, in the stock market. And um, so he, yeah, he, he was, uh, yeah, he worked pretty hard. <laughs> where, where in Canada did you move to? Where did you live? Where did you grow up? As far as I remember, we were in a town called Trenton. Trenton, not not a very big place. I think forty five thousand people or something like that. And we were there probably about five ten years, and then we moved to even a smaller place, which wasn't that far away. But um, but both places were pretty good. I mean, one is quite a scenic kind of tourist uh, resort, uh, picked in you know it's kind of by the lake, and we had a nice house by the lake, and um, always went fishing and. <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty good childhood, um, you know, fairly normal. I just remember all, going fishing all the time because our house was close to the lake. Well, how long did you live there? How old were you when you left? In? In Trenton. Uh, Trenton, probably about four years, and Picton, probably about um, about 15. Okay, what was it like for you at school? Because I'm sure you were probably one of the only Asians, or were you? Um, no, there was, there was only uh, one or two other Chinese families there. Our uncle and cousin worked for, for my father's restaurant, and then uh, he did the um, 
stock business on the side. He actually, he actually saved quite a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, you know, I didn't realize that until after he passed away and sh shared the um, what he had saved with the, you know, with the children. Okay. And so, um, yeah, he, he was a very kind of steady person, you know, okay. hard worker. And, and what about your mother? Uh, she was housewife. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, she was cooking for the uh, yeah. five of us. Five of you, right. Yeah, I mean, there was only two in the beginning, and then... Okay, yes. You know, along came three, and uh, so there you go. Um, Wait, were you close? With, are you? Cl you said you're close with your brothers and sisters, even now. I'm not that close to them because, um, you know, we've really gone our own ways, and and as you know, um, working in Tokyo really requires um, a lot of your uh, time and concentration mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to survive here. The, I mean, sometimes I look out onto the city and from a top of building, and I just see this layers and layers of apartment buildings and whatnot, and and I think, um, well, yeah, I guess it's us against the other fifteen, twenty million other people. So when you consider, uh, it's a great place to be. I mean. We're extremely lucky how safe it is, and you know. Uh, but the um, occasionally crosses my mind. I mean, how how many other people we're kind of competing against, you know, for a job or a project or? Uh, well, I don't think I try not to think about it, but it crosses my mind when I I look out onto the um, horizon. It was like a scene out of this movie, The Legend of Nineteen Hundred. Did you ever see that movie? I might have. With uh, Tim Roth? It was about a legendary pianist who was born a prodigy. He was born on a, on a boat, and he, he lived and entertained people on the boat. He, he was a prodigy, you know, a pianist. And, well, he, he never left the ship. At one point in the movie, he, um, he kind of falls in love with this girl in New York. Um, she was going to New York, and his best friend says, well, you know, um, you, you should go and follow her kind of thing. So, you know, there's this scene where he's coming off the plank, you know, and um, up to that point, his whole life had been playing the piano, entertaining the people on the uh, the cruise liner. And so he is coming down this plank, and um, he looks over the expanse of New York, you know, all the buildings and everything, and he kind of looks at it and he ponders a bit, and he takes his hat off, and he throws it into the water, and he goes back to the boat, and he, he, never, he never left the boat in his life. Even in, in the end of the movie, when it was becoming quite derelict, he somehow hid in the boat. And when they blew it up, he was there. He, he went with it. So that was that was his life. Years later, I I was in the uh, Cafe Flow in um, in Saint Germain in Paris, and lo and behold, who was sitting there? <laughs> Tim Roth, and uh, so I, you know, he was just by himself. So I thought, well, um, hmm, should I kind of say hello to him or? Well, I thought I'd do it because I enjoyed that movie so much. <laughs> so I, I just went up to him and I just said to him, well, uh, I just want to say I really enjoyed your movie, The Legend, Legend of 1900. And I left him a postcard and that was it. You, know? you didn't take a picture of him? No, no, I, I, I didn't bother okay. to ask. Well, Benjamin, tell me this. In school, were you always interested in photography? Well, Elementary, junior high, high school? Well, come... Well, nine to grade thirteen, come around grade eleven, I I picked up my mother's camera. It was a Roliflex, a very good German camera, and it was given to her by the um, her brother-in-law in Hong Kong. Very expensive cameras, about three, three, four thousand dollars, and um, so anyway, I uh, start picking it up and. 
playing around with a bit, and, and the pictures were turning out quite good, even like from the beginning. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I found something. <laughs> and uh, so my profession now is a continuation of of that. But you said from the like seventh to the eleventh grade. Yeah. You you started as early as junior high with her camera. Oh uh, no, I started in. Uh, uh, in high school? Uh, grade 11. Okay, so it's yeah. high school. So uh, 11 to 13. Okay. And then after that, um, well, you you know, you kind of thinking, well, what am I going to do now sort of thing. Wait, wait, you were still in Canada? Yeah. You're still in Canada, and you're in school. And in school, how were you academically? Were you a good student academically? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was quite, yeah, I was quite good. I, I Always came in like I suppose the top um, top eight of the class. What were your favorite subjects? God, I don't know. Maybe geography. <laughs> okay. Science. Were you in, were you were you athletic in any way? Yeah, I, um, I I I played basketball. That's your favorite sport, basketball. Um, to watch spectator sport. Y yeah. Yeah, I, I watched hockey a bit. Uh, I, I never played a bit. We did win a badminton championship, my partner and myself, in high school. I suppose that was probably grade 12, maybe the year before I graduated. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at that time we were playing with um, uh, some of the townships, like, I don't know, there's about, I guess, 10 towns around where we used to live. and. You know, they would get together for uh, you know a basketball competition or whatever, and so one year my partner and I we we uh, surprisingly won it. <laughs> Did you go to college after high school? I, I went to Ryerson. Uh, it's a polytechnical school, mm -hmm. and uh, I did photography there. Well, so you had already decided by this time that's what you wanted to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't quite know where I was heading for, but, um, well, it, it seems like that was the only thing that interested me at the time. How did your father feel about this? Did he support you through college? Or? Yeah, yeah, he, he uh, whatever we wanted to do, he basically supported us. He he never questioned our, I'll say, our choice. Um, oh, so he didn't have anything planned for you, like, I want you to Step into my footsteps. Oh, and I start see. Start taking that. He didn't do that to you. No, no, no. So you told him you wanted to do photography, and he said, "How much is it going to cost?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he he supported us. Uh, I guess uh, I spent th yeah three years. Uh, I went to Ryerson Polytechnico, and they had um, when I went there, they they just started a um, photographic arts course. New building great teachers from America. There were some very interesting teachers. and uh, we, we even had a chance to meet Marshall McLuhan, you know, the uh, yes. media guru. He was, that was around 1970, I think. You know, he was popular at that period. And, um, yeah, that started quite well. And in my first year, I, they had a competition, and I, for the whole school, 400 people and um, quite luckily I won it and um, you know the next three years I was kind of hanging about in that. Did you graduate from the college, from the tech school? No, I, I, I didn't. I could have but I I don't know, I just didn't bother. I, I don't know why, it just didn't seem to be important for me. So what did you do? You left? Yeah. Um, Canada or did you stay Yeah, we just finished and then I think I did a few part-time jobs and I saved some money and um, my best friend and I we left for Europe okay and um, we traveled around for around Europe for about four months on uh, small motorcycles what year was this yeah 72 73 I went to um, May 73 we arrived in Paris and um, we had a good friend there and uh, we hung out in Paris for about a month. We bought these little motorcycles. 
I mean, I, I guess maybe we were a little bit naive <laughs> mm -hmm. because, I mean, they were, I don't know if you know what a Solix is. It's just a very small, you know. Vest, like a Vespa? Yeah, like small smaller Vespa. even. Okay, smaller than that. We hung around Paris for about a month and then we left for Normandy and then went down the coast of France through the north of Spain to the Mediterranean and there we m met the um, group of people on this bus and they were going to Pamplona. I don't know if you've heard of the festival with the running of the bulls. Yes. So we decided to throw our bikes, bikes on top of the bus and we went with them. <laughs> okay. And uh, we ran with the bulls. You actually ran with the bulls. You got out in front and left the Yeah, about three times. Okay. Did you, you didn't get hit or anything? No, but... Um, did you see anyone that did? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I was so busy kind of I understand, but watching I mean, out. But that, after they passed, I, I, I the saw bulls people passed. diving. Diving. Like, you know, like getting trying out to jump, of, of course, yeah, trying to get out the yeah. way because those bulls are, man, through the small, narrow pathways. Yeah. There's, there's, there's thousands crazy. of them. I know. What, what is that about? I don't know. I think it's just a matter of the challenge. And the adrenaline rush. Yeah. But a I lot mean, of guys get gored. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did get a rush. I mean, <laughs> to say the least, I mean, I mean, I was really rushing it. <laughs> along for a while of course you don't you can't outrun them so you know you, you run for a little while like there's thousands of people in the street so you don't you trip over them too and you're trying to push well each the, other you, and you, and you that's what you have to watch out for the crowd is more dangerous, dangerous than, than the, the bulls because the bulls. If, if they run over you then uh, you get you might get trampled by the bulls who follow and then when they got close I I ducked off to the side and let them pass, and then I went to meet my friends. And he made it too, obviously. Huh? He made it all right too, obviously. Well, I, I don't think the other people ran, but um, right. but anyway, I was talking to them a bit, sitting down, and all of a sudden my knees were knocking, <laughs> you know, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you were I, nervous, I, yeah. I, I couldn't control it, you know. <laughs> I couldn't control it's it. It's all adrenaline was, in your body. You just yeah. Close, I close mean, to the, it was the close to death experience. You knew <laughs> you were done. So after yeah. your trips traveling in Europe, then what did you do after that? Well, we we, we went through um, the Riviera, Corsica, up through Switzerland, and Germany, Belgium, and then finally crossed the Channel to London, and um, that was where I had plans of kind of like maybe working. Like I, I, I'd um, read about, how to say, the advertising in London, and I kind of liked, liked what they did there, you know, with a sense of humor. And uh, I think it was uh, basically the best advertising in the world. I think better than American. It was a little bit more humorous, more witty. I went out and looked for um, a job as an assistant. In the beginning, I, I, I worked with a fashion photographer, John Carter, for about three months, and then I was quite lucky. Uh, on the weekend, I worked at the photographer's gallery, and I met a uh, producer there from National Geographic, and uh, he was um, looking for somebody to work during Christmas. Um, because the photographer didn't want to work during Christmas time. Do you remember your age at this time? Hmm? Do you remember your age at that time? Uh, about 25. Okay. I said to him, well, I'm, I'm interested. Um, could I come and see you? So I, I just had, a, at that time, just a cardboard box, you know, of, uh, you know, some prints that I had. Okay. I, I mean, I I hadn't done that much yet, but, but there were some quite nice uh, prints and... I went to see him in his hotel, and uh, basically they were looking for somebody to work just for five days during Christmas. Uh, it was a story about mining in Wales, and not too glamorous, but <laughs> anyways, I, I didn't really think I might get it, but I went back to the studio and said, well, you know, how'd it go? And it went okay, and uh, I think a week later he called up and said, um, you're free. If you're free, uh, 
please come and work. And I thought, wow, really? <laughs> so there I go. Uh, so I worked with the National Gra- Geographic for about five days. Um, when we were in high school, we subscribed to National Geographic and also um, Life magazine. Life was al- also a great magazine because they had all the great photojournalists at that time. Eugene Smith, Alfred Eisenstein, um, uh, Cartier-Bresson, you know, that that was uh, one of the best periods for photojournalism, uh, the s- 70s and 80s, and then life, you know, folded, and, but that was, life was a very, very big vehicle for um, photojournalism. What I, got you eventually to come to Japan? When did that come in? How did you come here? And how long have you been here so far? I arrived in uh, 87. Basically, I I came with my wife, who was Japanese. But I didn't really intend to be staying that long. But I, you, you married your wife before you came? Yeah, in London. And she's Japanese? Yeah. Was she raised in London or raised here in Japan? She, she was raised here, but she was learning English in, in okay. Tokyo. Right. How long were you married? Actually, not that long. <laughs> uh, three years, I guess. Three years. Is she? St- you don't keep in contact with her? No, no, no we haven't been happened. in contact. Right. So you came here with her in '87. Yeah. And it was towards the end of the bubble, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, it was the beginning of the. You know, was it the beginning? It was close to the beginning because oh. I think the bubble was in the '90, 1990 or something like that. '88. Oh yeah. '90, something like that. Oh After yeah, I guess shot. in. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, well, I was quite lucky. I, I had an introduction from the. Um, the president of the Royal Academy in London, mm-hmm. Sir Hugh Castle, who was also an architect, he'd been a judge on this um, particular competition called Premium Imperial, kind of like Nobel Prize for different architecture, mm-hmm. uh, music, you know, art, um, and it was sponsored by uh, Fuji Sankei Group. You know, the um, who, who the owner, uh, Nupataka Shakunai, he. Um, he started the Chokuku no Mari, you know, in Hakone, I guess 40, 45 years ago. See, Hugh Castle had been a judge on his, you know, selection committee. And very luckily, I had um, dinner with him and his wife because his wife and I, we had a show in the same place in, in London. With my Jewish godparents, we had dinner, and then he introduced me to uh, this chap, uh, she- Shek and I. He was the founder of uh, Fuji Sankei Group and the Chokuku no Marie. And um, we were invited to um, to visit him and uh, in the Chokuku no Marie, the museum at his uh, private. He has a private house there. We, we had lunch there and uh, with him at his house. And uh, he uh, he invited us to stay for a few days or long as we want sort of thing and so there we were staying in this duplex where Ronald Reagan stayed Um, because Sheck and I had paid Ronald Reagan a couple million dollars to to be on his um, TV program for I don't know something or another and so in the um, residence in Hakone on the museum. They had a duplex where Reagan stayed and, um, and he, he put us there and I thought, well, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, how long should we stay? <laughs> Was it you and your wife? <laughs> Sorry? You and your wife stayed there? Yeah, yeah, we okay. stayed there for, um, I think, three days. Okay, so this is in 87? 87. 87. 87 yeah. So then after, sh- after you guys divorced, and she separated. Did you continue to stay in Japan? Yeah, yeah. I, I stayed. Uh, I was quite lucky when we came into Tokyo from Hakone. Um, I think one day I was visiting a friend at the um, McCann Erickson. It's an advertising agency at the Aoyama Twin Tower. And just as we were kind of um, saying goodbye, he he pointed out the window to this building. It, it was the Sogets Kaikon. I, do you, do you know the street? It? Yeah, across the, the black, street. Uh, the black, the yeah. black. Uh, it's a black building. It's the headquarters of the um, Sogetsu Ikebana School, and um, and also um, it was built by Kenzo Tange, the you know the architect who did the 
64 Olympic Stadium. My friend said um, he was a creative director. He said, that's a really interesting building. You should go and see that. So lo and behold, after that meeting, we went to the Soget's Kaikon. And, and very luckily, we met, we bumped into the um, secretary of Toshigo and we chatted a bit. And I told him that we'd been to Cho Cho Chokuku no Mari and met Shek and I. And she said, uh, well, we're having our anniversary. You know, um, uh, I think our 60-year anniversary uh, next week, and why don't you come and meet Mr. Toshigawara? And, uh, well, you know, he, he was the um, only Japanese to win a, a goal. It was a, a line at the uh, Cannes Film Festival. He, he did a movie called Women of the Dune. I don't know if you've seen it, but that was 1964, same year as the Tokyo Olympics. Okay. And the same... At that time, uh, Kenzo Tangi was the architect of the you know, Olympic Stadium. Well, at that particular time, Tangi, he was the architect of Sogetsu, but also he had his offices there. And so after meeting um, Toshigawara and, and doing his picture, which um, he really liked, he actually bought it a couple of times and then he introduced me to um, Kenzo Tange, the grandpa of Japanese architecture, and we photographed him there, um, I think, just a few months after. And when you say we photographed him, you had a team? No, no, only myself. Oh, but you always say we. Yeah, sort okay. of, yeah. All right. Um, Was he your first famous person to photograph? In Tokyo? Yes. Um, well, I, I would say... First, Shekinai, the founder of Fuji Sanke Group and Shok Hakone Open Air Museum. And then Toshigawara, the movie director and director of the Sogetsu, Sogetsu Ikebana School. And then Tange was shortly after. So those three were the, yeah, the first three within about maybe a two month period. So how does that work? If, you, if you're photographing them, do they pay you to do this, or do you get paid after you put it up on exhibition with their permission? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I, well, uh, in the beginning, um, they didn't ask me to photograph them, but I, I wanted to photograph them. So, of course, there are people that, like my wife's family said, not many people get to see. So I, I did the picture of Shek and I, and, but... He bought 10 pictures, uh, uh, sold for, um, I don't know, a few million yen. Um, Ooh, would you do, blow them up to a huge size or something? No, or no, they're about this big. Well, how, did you, how do you come up with but the price? How did, could you decide what to charge him? I didn't. He, 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 he did. <laughs> he said, I'll give you a million yen for yeah, 10. Yeah, for 10. Well, I mean, he's rich. I mean, I know, I know, but that doesn't mean he has. He could see. I give you fifty. You know, <laughs> go my yen too. He didn't have to see a million yen, but well, he decided I, to pay you a million well, for I, ten. I, and I, that's how you set up your prices then. You said no, you no. I, well, I, I, I was let's say pleasantly surprised. I mean, you know, that's uh, the most you'd made up until that point for a picture, or had you ever sold a picture prior to that? Um, well, I, 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 I've sold one to Toshigawara for. Two and a half million. No, I'm saying pr prior to him. Oh, um, he was the first that paid you that much money for a picture. I guess so, uh, okay. as a for a portrait, yeah. And that shocked you, and you took it, I mean, happily, and said, "I'll be able to live a couple of months off of this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you still married at the time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your wife was happy with you then too. So I'm sure you guys had a very good evening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had a celebration. <laughs> I'm sure you did. So then after that, you start thinking, someone's willing to pay me a million yen for 10 pictures of himself. I think I've got, <laughs> I think we can work this out. Well, I, I guess a million yen wasn't that much for these people at that time. But that doesn't matter. It was a lot for you and a lot oh, for yeah. anybody. Yeah. At that time, any time, that's a lot of money for 10 pictures? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they were not framed. I mean, they were just... This, see, printed. and that's even more so. I'm thinking, when you said a million yen, I thought you made a portrait that he'd have, you walk in his house and you go, wow, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, well, it, it was the same portrait, but just 10 Small. copies. He, yeah. he, 
he really liked the I'll show you the picture okay. later he really liked the um, so that was a million yen you got for ten of those photos yeah all right yeah so then after that the next highest amount was what two million well I sold one to to Shigawara for um, two and a half million how big was that oh that was big that was three my three by three meters okay so he just took one but that's how yeah much it cost. yeah but he, he bought it twice I think he, he bought a smaller one which was I think 300,000 yen and then he he, he, he he I made a huge one because it's one of the uh, portraits that I like the most so I, I sold um, a picture I did at the Cannes Film Festival to um, Hiro Yamagata he, he's kind of a, was a famous Japanese artist, he, but he he left for America. He he was working in California a lot with um, with a lot of help from Schwarzenegger. They're like, you know, very buddy buddy. I think he's coming to um, to Tokyo at the end of this month. Anyway, I, I did this picture at the Cannes Film Festival. It was about one meter by two and a half meters, and he bought that for about uh, one and a half million yen. And I had to send it to California, <laughs> okay. you know. And um, but he he's a real character. He um, he was very popular in Japan, and he was um, backed by Fuji Sanke Group. And um, he said he made three hundred million dollars. He made a fortune. He was doing um, posters for the Olympics. He, you mean through photography? No, no. He was an artist. He was not. So he was painting these. Yeah. Okay. He did paintings, and then at one point he he bought thirty nineteen fifty two Mercedes Benz Cabriolet. He bought thirty two, and then he had had them all restored, and then um, painted white, and then he started to paint the pattern of um, the wildlife in um, in Fiji. Like he owned a few islands in Fiji, and he started. Um, he made these art cars from these uh, 1952 Mercedes Cabriolet. I, I imagine he was probably partly sponsored by Mercedes. And um, is he? Did he pass away? No, no. He's he's still, uh, he's still around. He's How old is he now? About do you think? Mid 60s. Okay. Oh, so he's younger than us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's he, in he's Japan. A, oh no, he's in California, but okay. he he's coming at the end of this month. Okay. Maybe you should interview. Him. <laughs> yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I'll but see. But he's born and raised in Japan. He's Japanese. Yeah, okay. yeah. But anyway, he was a very good buddy of uh, Schwarzenegger, which is very useful for him uh, contact, mm -hmm. as um, Schwarzenegger was um, uh, married in, into the uh, you know Kennedy family, you know Maria Shriver, and so he, uh, one time I, uh, I photographed. Hero at the Oscars because he w he did an installation in the governor's ballroom where the people went, the winners went had dinner after the um, ceremony, and he had a beautiful display there and uh, including a couple of his cars. So that was during the Oscar time. Um, we stayed at his house a couple days and he got us a private driver. So that was a pretty interesting trip and um, well we. We keep in touch, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we meet up every now and again. If people not try, want to commission you, they can commission you now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that particular portrait, I, um, I did six years ago, and it's um, the original portrait was by Irving Penn, mm -hmm. one of a famous American mm -hmm. photographer. Mm -hmm. And one day I, um, some reason I made a copy of it and then I kind of methodically tore it up. Mm. And then I started rearranging it on the, um, on the ground. And I, I came up with this image of uh, Picasso at, with eye in the middle. And then when I showed it to my friend in Paris, he said, oh, it's just like the map of France. And I so I looked up the map of France, and um, and it was so this uh, image I've been kind of promoting the last few years, okay. and it's been accepted for some competition in Paris during Paris Photo next year. There's a special anniversary. It's the 50 years anniversary of Picasso's death. So there's going to be a big celebration between the um, 
Spanish government and the um, French government because um, Picasso, although Spanish, spent most of his life painting in Paris. And um, so there's going to be special celebrations concerning 50 years since he died in 1973. Mm. I, I met his son, mm -hmm. um, Claude Picasso. Okay. He, he had, um, Picasso had um, two children with F Francois Gillot, who, who did a really interesting book about Picasso called My Life with Picasso. Mm. I met uh, Claude Picasso at the um, Paris photo a couple times. Mm -hmm. My friend knew him, so I uh, introduced us, and quite interestingly, he, he worked for um, Richard Avedon, one of the most famous um, American photographers in the 60s, late 60s, probably like 66 to 68 or something. And then he, he, he did photography himself for a while. Mm. But in 1973, his father passed away, and he uh, was basically the person in the family taking care of the how to say the distribution of the, you know, the wealth, and and there was a lot. It took a long time to um, first collect it all, record it all, and then how to distribute it. You know. What do you consider a good life in Japan? A good life in Japan. Well, it's a, it's an interesting question. Well, I I think for me. Yeah, you know, to be to be able to have some good friends that you know I I enjoy time with and um, and to be able to do um, interesting projects uh, concerning photography. Um, yeah, for me that's the um, thing that keeps me going here. You know. Um, do you see yourself being here indefinitely? No, I may end up there soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, I I I don't th think I I I would move uh, now, but if I did, I, I would consider Paris. You know. You like Paris. Yeah, but I think it would be very difficult to work there. I mean, I mean, I don't have many work contacts there, and um, at the moment the. What I have set up here with my manager and everything, it, it's quite a nice system and it's uh, it's not nerve-wracking. <laughs> and, you know, I'm fairly stress-free. And uh, oh, we've done some interesting projects, especially, especially with Yoyoi Kusama. Mm -hmm. uh, was it 2011 to 2014? I, I, Three years, I, I spent a lot of time photographing her everywhere, especially at the um, launch of her, you know, the big event with Louis Vuitton, which made her a global icon. I mean, I would say she's probably the most popular artist now in the world. My friend who came from Tel Aviv, he said the museum who has her show there, it's sold out. Show in um, Toronto sold out. The one in New York sold out. The project with Louis Vuitton, um, they promoted her in their shop and her products. Marc Jacobs did the design. And then they ordered, organized a show at the Whitney Museum in New York, the Sophia Arena in Madrid, the Tate in London, and the um, Pompidou in Paris. Four major places three months each, mm. a whole year. Mm. Now, That's some just trying to imagine what that would cost. That's right. I mean, for Louis Vuitton, and um, I mean, that was a big investment. And after that, she is, it's very hard to find her work for sale. I've had people ask me, if you find me the, some Kosama's work, I'll, I'll give you um, eight percent. I I, I I tried a couple times, but couldn't find it. Couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. Well, Benjamin, I want to end with this and thank you so much for taking the time to be in here 
and I hope we get to do this again. <laughs> Maybe with some other people, but some of your other artist friends, possibly. Right. Yeah, I could. Uh, yeah, maybe I can organize that sometime. Maybe, maybe with Hero. Yeah, we can sit in here and have a group discussion. If he comes, um, hopefully at the end of this month. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure you press like, subscribe, and remember, it's all unknown. So continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Thank you.